You're seeing these people with signs saying things like abortion is murder. You feel so judged about the decision you've made. You murder women's babies, you're a murderer. I come to work and I'm almost prepared for that to happen. Women who come to our clinics are not. Abortion is legal, but thousands of patients are regularly being confronted with sites like this. They say they're there to pray, to help, but for many, they're doing the opposite. At 20 weeks pregnant, Lauren was told her baby had little chance of survival due to a heart complication. While deciding what to do, she found out she was having a girl and named her Riley. On one hand, it was the hardest decision I've ever had to make, but on the other hand, it was the easiest decision I've ever had to make. I knew I was doing what was best for her, but it was hard because I didn't want to give her up. And I remember every single second, I remember saying goodbye. And sorry. <sighs> hardest time of my life. Lauren says her trauma was aggravated by having to pass gatherings like this at the entrance to the Queen's Elizabeth Maternity Hospital in Glasgow. It's hard enough, obviously, losing your baby and knowing as well that you've had to make the decision. Um, but when you're driving past and you're seeing these people with signs saying things like abortion is murder, you feel so judged about the decision you've made. Four years on, when she gave birth to her daughter, Aria, in the same building last summer, she had to see them again. My mum would be driving and I'd have to, like, basically sit with my phone and make sure I couldn't see them. And I would keep my eyes closed until we actually get into the hospital grounds. Due to the pandemic, more early medical abortions are happening at home, which means clinics are now more likely to see complex cases like Lauren's. Data suggests that in one year, more than 100,000 women in the UK attended abortion services targeted by activists. Efforts to address this are different across the four nations. Northern Ireland recently passed a bill to create buffer zones blocking activists from entering areas outside clinics, but this has been referred to the Supreme Court to decide whether it interferes with rights to protest. In Scotland, the First Minister has pledged to chair a roundtable summit to discuss buffer zones after expressing her support for them. In England and Wales, the situation remains under review. Bournemouth is one of the most affected areas in the UK. For years, the council here has been urged to follow Ealing, Richmond and Manchester and use a public space protection order to set up a buffer zone around its local clinic and tackle what has been described as antisocial behaviour. These are two people who are standing at the entrance. They gave us a leaflet but walked away when they realised we had a camera. Sorry, can we just talk to you for a moment? So when we arrived here earlier today, one of those two women was standing right here. And what's significant about this very spot is that this clinic is at the end of a cul-de-sac. So literally the only way into this clinic is to walk right past them. And on the way, they're given a leaflet, which can make them feel guilty and question the choices that they've made. One of the midwives talked to us about the effect gatherings were having. She showed us many items which have been given to distressed patients. This was one of the leaflets that was handed out um, just after the um, Black Lives Matter movement with George Floyd. Um, so instead of hands up, don't shoot, yeah. it says hands up, don't abort. Yeah. There were more than 580 handwritten statements, including from teenagers, people with learning difficulties and rape victims. Uncomfortable, intimidated, shamed, judged. It's those words again and again, mm, isn't it? Yeah. And that is the th ultimate, you know, resounding thing, is women don't want to come to this appointment and feel judged. Mm. Notice at the bottom, would you support a buffer zone? And 
Yes, yes, yes. You're not going to find anybody that's put no. And when you see how many folders we've got of evidence, and most of this evidence will have been submitted to um, Bournemouth Christchurch and Paul Council. The council here say the situation is under consistent review, and if the evidential threshold is met, formal action will be considered. Small groups of campaigners often gather outside the clinic to act as a counter-presence. They say national buffer zone legislation is needed, but anti-abortion groups disagree. Lovely to meet you. Thanks yeah, so, so much, much for coming. Take a seat. One of the largest is 40 Days for Life, which hosts vigils each Lent and autumn. Do you think it's appropriate to stand right outside abortion services? Yes. We understand people have very strong feelings on both sides of the debate. Um, but we are going to the place where abortions happen in the local community with a message of love, for a message, an alternative message to what they may be offered. In April in Glasgow, there were more than 100 people outside. Uh, There's a candlelit vigil, yeah. candlelit vigil outside the uh, hospital there. Is, is yeah. that just not an extreme invasion of privacy for, for patients? I don't believe it is, no. What would be your message to anyone watching who has felt harassed by your vigils? If people feel harassed, I'm sorry that they have that feeling. I've been doing this 12 years. I can't remember a single example from a 40 Days for Life vigil of a volunteer harassing another person. Harassment is a very strong term. We, we don't do that. We offer help and we pray. That's it. Campaigners would argue your mere presence is harassment. Standing in the street it does not constitute harassment. So that would be my response. While it's taken Lauren years to speak out, her message to those gathering outside abortion services is now clear. I don't know if they want to intimidate, but that's what they're doing to people. They're intimidating them. They are making them feel absolutely terrible for decisions that they might not be able to have a real choice in. Anna Collinson reporting there. If you've been affected by any of the issues raised in that report, you can get in touch with the Action Line on bbc.co.uk forward slash Action Line or else by calling 0800 066 066.